Chapter 13, Fence's Giant Storehouse. My dear Foxy, cried Badger, what in the world has happened to your tail? Don't talk about it, please, said Mr Fox. It's a painful subject. They were digging the new tunnel. They dug on in silence. Badger was a great digger and the tunnel went forward at a terrific pace now that he was lending a paw. Soon they were crouching underneath yet another wooden floor. Mr Fox grinned slyly, showing sharp white teeth. If I am not mistaken, my dear Badger, he said, we are now underneath the farm which belongs to that nasty little pot-bellied dwarf, Bunce. We are, in fact, directly underneath the most interesting part of that farm. Ducks and geese, cried the small foxes, licking their lips. Juicy tender, ducks and big fat geese. Exactly, said Mr Fox. But how in the world can you know where we are? asked Badger. Mr Fox grinned again, showing even more white teeth. Look, he said, I know my way around these farms, blindfolded. For me, it's just as easy below ground as it is above. He reached high and pushed up the wooden floorboard. Then another. He poked his head through the gap. Yes, he shouted, jumping in the room above. I've done it again. I've hit it smack on the nose, right in the bullseye. Come and look. Quickly, Badger and the three small foxes scrambled up after him. They stopped and stared. They stood and gasped. They were so overwhelmed they couldn't speak. For what they now saw was a kind of fox's dream, a badger's dream, a paradise for hungry animals. This, my dear old badger, proclaimed Mr Fox, is Buncey, Bunce's mighty storehouse. All his finest stuff is stored here before he sends it off to market. Against all the four walls of the great room, stacked in cupboards and piled upon shelves reaching from floor to ceiling, were thousands and thousands of the finest and fattest ducks and geese, plucked and ready for roasting. And above, dangling from the rafters, there must have been at least a hundred smoked hams and fifty sides of bacon. Just feast your eyes on that, cried Mr Fox, dancing up and down. What do you think of it, eh? Pretty good grub. Suddenly, as those springs had been released in their legs, the three hungry small foxes and the ravenous, hung, ravenously hungry badger sprang forward to grab the luscious food. Stop! ordered Mr Fox. This is my party, so I shall do the choosing. The others fell back, licking their chops. Mr Fox began prowling around the storehouse, examining the glorious display with expert eye. A thread of saliva slid down one side of his drawer and hung suspended in mid-air, mid -air, then snapped. We mustn't overdo it, he said. Mustn't give the game away. Mustn't let them know what we've been up to. We must be neat and tidy and take just a few of the, choice, of the choicest morsels. So, to start with, we shall have four plump young ducks. He took them from the shelf. Oh, how lovely and fat they are. No wonder Bunce gets a special price for them at the market. All right, Badger, lend me a hand to get them down. You children can help as well. There we go. Goodness me, look at your mouths watering. And uh, now, um, I think we better have a few geese. Three will be quite enough. We'll take the biggest. Oh my, oh my, you'll never see finer geese than these in the king's kitchen. Gently does it, that's the way. And now, about a couple of nice smoked hams. I adore smoked ham, don't you, Badger? Fetch me the step ladder, will you please? Mr Fox climbed up the ladder and handed down three magnificent hams. And do you like bacon, Badger? Well, I'm mad about bacon, cried Badger, dancing with excitement. Let's have a side of bacon, that big one up there. And carrots, Dad, said the smallest of the three foxes. We must take some carrot, some of those carrots. Don't be a twerp, said Mr Fox. You know we ain't never eat anything like that. It's not for us, Dad, it's for the rabbits. They only eat vegetables. My goodness me, you're right, cried Mr Fox. What a thoughtful little fellow you are. Take ten bunches of carrots. Soon, all this lovely loot was lying in a neat heap on the floor. The small foxes crouched close their noses twitching, their eyes shining like stars. And now, said Mr Fox, we will have to borrow some from our friend Bunce, two of those useful pushcarts over there in the corner. And he and Badger fetched the pushcarts and the ducks and geese and hams and bacon were loaded onto them. Quickly, the pushcarts were lowered through the hole in the floor. The animals slid down after them, back in the tunnel. 
Mr Fox again pulled the floorboard very carefully into place so that no one could see they had opened it. My darlings, he said, pointing to two of the three small foxes. Take a car each and run back as fast as you can to your mother. Give her my love and tell her we are, are having guests for dinner. The badgers, the moles, the rabbits and the weasels. Tell her it must be a truly great feast and tell her the rest of us will be home as soon as we've done one more little job. Yes, Dad, right away, Dad, they answered, and they grabbed a trolley each and went rushing off down the tunnel. Chapter 14. Badger has doubts. Just one more visit, cried Mr Fox, and I'll bet I know where that will be, said the only small fox left. He was the smallest of them all. Where? asked Badger. Well, said the small fox, we've been to Boggis and we've been to Bunt, but we haven't been to Bean. It must be Bean. You are right, said Mr Fox, but what you don't know is which part of Bean's place we're about to visit. Which? they said both together. Aha, said Mr Fox, just you, wait and see. They were digging as they talked, the tunnel was going forward fast. Suddenly Badger said, doesn't this worry you a tiny bit, Mr um, Foxy? Worry me, said Mr Fox, what? All this, this stealing. Mr Fox stopped digging and stared at Badger as though he had gone completely dotty. My dear old furry frump, he said, do you know anyone in the whole world who wouldn't swipe a few chickens if his children were starving to death? There was a short silence while Badger thought about this. You are far too respectable, said Mr Fox. There's nothing wrong with being respectable, said Badger. Look, said Mr Fox, Boggis and Benton Bean are out to kill us. You realise that, I hope. I do, Foxy, I do indeed, said the gentle Badger. But we're not going to stoop to their level. We don't want to kill them. I should hope not indeed, said Badger. We wouldn't dream of it, said Mr Fox. We shall simply take a little food here and there to keep us and our families alive, right? I suppose we'll have to, said Badger. If they want to be horrible, then let them, said Mr Fox. We down here are decent, peace-loving people. Badger laid his head on one side and smiled at Mr Fox. Foxy, he said, I love you. Thank you, said Mr Fox. And now let's get on with the digging. Five minutes later, Badger's front paw hit against something flat and hard. What on earth is this? He said. It looks like a solid stone wall. He and Mr Fox scraped away the soil. It was a wall, but it was built out of bricks, not stones. The wall was right in front of them, blocking their way. Now, who in the world would build a wall under the ground? Asked Badger. Very simple, said Mr Fox. It's the wall of an underground room, and if I'm not mistaken, it is exactly what I'm looking for. Chapter 15 Bean's secret cider cellar. Mr Fox examined the wall carefully. He saw that the cement between the bricks was old and crumbly, so he loosened the bricks without much trouble and pulled it away. Suddenly, out from the hole where a brick had been, there popped a small, sharp face with whiskers. Go away, it snapped. You can't come in here, it's private. Good Lord, said Badger. It's rats. You saucy beast, said Mr Fox. I should have guessed we'd find you down here somewhere. Go away, shrieked the rat. Go on, beat it. This is my private pitch. Shut up, said Mr Fox. I will not shut up, shrieked the rat. This is my place. I got here first. Mr Fox gave a brilliant smile, flashing his white teeth. My dear rat, he said softly, I am hungry. And if you don't hop it quickly, I shall eat you up in one gulp. That did it. Rat popped back fast out of sight. Mr Fox laughed and began pulling more bricks out of the wall. When he had made a biggish hole, he crept through it. Badger and the smallest fox followed him in. They found themselves in a vast, damp, gloomy cellar. This is it, cried Mr Fox. This is what, said Badger. The place is empty. Where are all the turkeys, asked the smallest fox, staring into the gloom. I thought Bean was a turkey man. He is a turkey man, said Mr Fox. But we're not after turkeys now. We've got plenty of food. Then what do we need, Dad? Take a good look around, said Mr Fox. Don't you see anything that interests you? Badger and the smallest fox peered into the half darkness. As their eyes became accustomed to the gloom, they began to see what looked like a lot of big glass jars standing upon shelves around the wall. They went closer. They were jars. There were hundreds of them. And upon each one was written the word 
spider. The smallest fox leapt high in the air. Oh, Dad, he cried out. Look what we found. It's cider. Exactly, said Mr Fox. Tremendous, shouted Badger. Being secret cider cellar, said Mr Fox. But go carefully, my dears. Don't make a noise. This cellar is right underneath the farmhouse itself. Cider, said Badger. It's especially good for badgers. We take it as medicine. One glass, one large glass, three times a day with meals and other bed, another at bedtime. It will make the feast into a banquet, said Mr Fox. While they were talking, the smallest fox had sneaked a jar off the shelf and had taken a gulp. Wow, he gasped. Wowee! You must understand this was not the ordinary weak fizzy cider one buys in a store. It was the real stuff, a home-brewed fiery liqueur that burned in your throat and boiled in your stomach. Ah, gasped the small fox. This is some cider. That's quite enough of that, said Mr Fox, grabbing the jar and putting it under his own lips. He took a tremendous gulp. It's miraculous, he whispered, fighting for breath. It's fabulous. It's beautiful. It's my turn, said Badger, taking the jar and tilting his head back. The cider gurgled and bubbled down his throat. It's, it's like melted gold, he gasped. Oh, Foxy, it's like drinking sunbeams and rainbows. You're poaching, shrieked Rat. Put that down at once. There'll be none left for me. Rat was perched upon his, the highest shelf in the cellar, peering out from behind a huge jar. There was a small rubber tube inserted into the neck of the jar, and Rat was using his tube to suck out the cider. You're drunk, said Mr Fox. Mind your own business, shrieked the Rat, and if your great clumsy brutes come messing around in here, we'll all be caught. Get out and leave me to sip my cider in peace. At that moment, they heard a woman's voice calling out in the, um, from the house above them. Hurry up and get that cider, Mabel. The boy said, you know, Mr. Bean doesn't like to be kept waiting, especially when he's been out all night in a tent. The animals froze. They stayed absolutely still. Their ears pricked, their bodies tense. Then they heard the sound of a door being opened. The door was at the top of a flight of stone steps leading down from the house to the cellar. And now someone was starting to come down those steps.